good morning students again uh, we will continue with this uh, topic of ferrites a ferrite is a type of ceramic compound composed of iron oxide combined chemically with one or more additional metallic elements right so various properties we had already discussed ferrites are non conducting materials so eddy currents and ohmic losses are less than ferromagnetic materials ferrites are used as transformer cores at radio frequencies they have very low dielectric loss they have very low corrosive force the uh, corrosivity is very less they are mechanically hard brittle and difficult to machine they have very high resistivity so various types of ferrites are soft ferrites hard ferrites rectangular loop and uh, microwave ferrites some materials have hysteresis loop which is rectangular in shape right and they have dielectric constant of order of 10 to 12 right so various types of ferrites uh, types of ferrites are uh, cubic ferrites hexagonal ferrites garnets right so next is what are the uses of ferrites and uh, various ferrites are used in electronic inductors transformer cores and electromagnets ferrites powders are used in coatings of magnetic recording tapes then uh, most common radio magnets including those used in loudspeakers are ferrite magnets then it is a common magnetic material for electromagnetic instrument pickups right now uh, we will continue with the type of magnetic materials hard magnetic materials and soft magnetic materials on the basis of hysteresis loss hard magnetic materials have very large hysteresis loss due to large hysteresis loop area okay the corrosivity and retentivity values are very large because due to large hysteresis loop area and these materials cannot be easily magnetized or demagnetized these materials have small values of permeability and susceptibility and they are used to make permanent magnets examples of hard magnetic materials are cobalt chromium steel tungsten steel alnico alloy etc right now soft magnetic materials soft magnetic materials have low hysteresis loss due to small hysteresis loop area or bh curve area small bh curve area corrosive due to small bh curve area their corrosivity and retentivity are also small and these materials are easily magnetized and demagnetized as compared to hard magnetic materials these materials have large values of permeability and susceptibility and they are used to make electromagnets and their examples are iron silicon alloys ferrous nickel alloy cast alloy carbon steel manganese and nickel steel etc right now next topic is magnetic anisotropy magnetic anisotropy is the dependence of magnetic properties on the direction of applied field with respect to the crystal lattice right or you can say it turns out that depending on the orientation of the field with respect to the crystal lattice one would need a lower or higher magnetic field to reach the saturation magnetization right okay uh, next topic is our magnetostriction what is magnetostriction magnetostriction is a property of a ferromagnetic material that causes them to change their shape or dimensions they expand or they may contract during the process of magnetization right it is a property of a ferromagnetic material that causes them to change their shape or dimension right and this effect was first developed by james joule james joule in year 1842 when observing a sample of nickel here you can see the domains are uh, randomly oriented and when the magnetic field is not applied in this diagram and when the magnetic field is applied the domains are uh, aligned in the direction of the field right okay now what is the how the how magnetostriction works internally ferromagnetic materials have a structure that is divided into domains which are randomly oriented and when the material is not exposed to magnetic field and each domain is a region of uniform magnetic polarization this is non magnet this is the random arrangement of magnetic domains in this picture and when the magnetic field is applied the boundaries between the domains shift and the domains rotate and both of these effects cause a change in the material dimension that is the main thing 
and uh, the result of magnetostriction is when the magnetic field is uh, applied the, there is a alignment of magnetic domains as you can see these are random randomly oriented domains and when the magnetic field is applied there is specific alignment of magnetic domains the orientation of these small domains by the imposition of the magnetic field creates a strain field as the intensity of the magnetic field is increased more and more magnetic domains orientate themselves so that their principal axis of anisotropy are collinear with the magnetic field in each region and finally saturation is achieved you can say okay uh, what is the effect of increasing or decreasing uh, applied or external magnetic field on a ferromagnetic material you can uh, it can be seen here the arrow mark indicates the change in value increase whether it increases or decreases and direction of the applied magnetic field right so magnetostriction application is used it is used for the production of ultrasonic waves so before that uh, what are ultrasonic waves so the sound waves which are classified into three types on the basis of their frequencies sound waves are classified into three types first is infrasonic waves infrasonic waves are sound waves having frequency below 20 hertz then audible sound waves sound waves of frequency between 20 to 20 kilohertz and then ultrasonic waves sound waves of frequency above 20 kilohertz right so this is the spectrum of this this is the infrasonic uh, infrasound region right this is acoustic region this is the ultrasound region this is sound waves audible sound waves ultrasonic waves infrasonic waves right 0 to uh, up to 20 hertz 20 to 20 kilohertz and that is audible sound waves this is about 20 kilohertz to 2 megahertz uh, about 20 kilohertz we can say these are ultrasonic waves right so here this is the these are the diagrams for production of ultrasonic waves by different uh, animals animals underwater uh, animals we can say underwater uh, production of ultrasonic waves in the sea okay now production of ultrasonic how ultrasonic waves are produced the ultrasonic waves are produced by a mechanical method called galton's whistle galton's whistle it is also produced by magnetostriction and piezoelectric oscillators right let us discuss the magnetostriction oscillator in this section so what is magnetostriction method magnetostriction method is for producing ultrasonic waves of frequency up to 3 megahertz only now what is the principle in this case the magnetostriction oscillator is based on the principle of magnetostriction effect when a ferromagnetic material is subjected to a varying magnetic field the length of the ferromagnetic rod changes and the ferromagnetic rod is set into resonant vibration whenever the frequency of the tank circuit coincides with the vibration of the ferromagnetic rod then resonant occurs we can say right again i repeat when a ferromagnetic material is subjected to a varying magnetic field length of the ferromagnetic rod changes or you can say dimension of the rod changes and the ferromagnetic rod is set into resonance and it is uh, in resonance with the frequency of the tank circuit right or you can say when the frequency of the tank circuit coincide with the vibration of the ferromagnetic rod then resonant occurs okay so this is the diagram for production of ultrasonic waves in the construction part a ferromagnetic rod ab made up of nickel is clamped in the middle as shown in the figure coil of wires l1 and l2 are winded at the ends of the a and b one end of the coil l2 is connected to the base of npn transistor and other end of the coil l1 is connected to the emitter this is the emitter part and the negative terminal of a battery right this is uh, one end is connected to the base and another end is connected to the emitter and negative terminal of the battery right now a variable capacitor c1 is connected across l1 this c1 is connected across l1 this thing one end of the variable capacitor is co connected to the collector circuit whereas other end of the variable capacitor this one end is connected to the collector circuit and other end of the variable capacitor is connected to the positive end of the battery 
this is connected to the positive end of battery through a milliammeter and a key we can say this is the key right okay this is the construction part now what is the working how magnetostriction oscillator works working of magnetostriction oscillator when the key is closed the tank circuit lc is set into oscillation this tank circuit lc is set into oscillation right when the key is closed and then with the frequency of vibration given by f is equal to 1 over 2 pi under root lc where l is the inductance of the coil l1 this l is the inductance of this coil and c is the capacitance of variable capacitor c1 right okay okay just a minute as the frequency is given by 1 by 2 pi under root lc right and after that an alternating emf is produced due to the vibration of the tank circuit this alternating emf induces an alternating magnetic field uh, due to induced alternating magnetic field the length of the ferromagnetic material gets changed due to magnetostriction due to the alternating magnetic field the change in the length of the ferromagnetic material induces an emf in the coil l2 right so this is the working and then after that the induced emf is fed into the base of the transistor and hence it gets amplified and it is fed into the tank circuit thus the oscillation is continuously maintained the frequency of the oscillation of the tank circuit is varied by adjusting the variable capacitance right if the frequency of the tank circuit matches with the frequency of vibration of the ferromagnetic rod ultrasonic waves are produced and ultrasonic waves are emitted from the ends of the road the frequency of the ultrasonic waves is given by f is equal to 1 over 2 pi under root lc or you can say 1 over 2l under root e by rho where l is the length of the ferromagnetic material and y is the young's modulus and rho is the density of the ferromagnetic material right clear okay now what are the properties of ultrasonic waves the frequency of ultrasonic waves is greater than 20 kilohertz second ultrasonic waves are highly energetic because of their high frequency they have intensity up to 10 kilowatt right per meter square uh, like ordinary sound waves ultrasonic waves produce alternate compression and rarefaction when they are propagating through liquid and gaseous medium ultrasonic waves produce cavitation effect in liquids the speed of ultrasonic waves increases with the increase in its frequency. Ultrasonic waves are having a shorter wavelength. The ultrasonic waves exhibit reflection and interference phenomena similar to the ordinary light waves. The ultrasonic waves exhibit negligible diffraction effects. These are various properties. Now what are the applications? First applications in science and engineering, it is used to detect flaws and cracks in metals. It is used to detect ships, submarines, iceberg in ocean. It is used to soldering aluminium coil capacitors, aluminium wires, plates without using any fluxes. It is used to weld some metals which can't be welded by electric or gas welding. Then it is used for cutting and drilling holes in metals. It is used to form stable emulsion of even immiscible liquids like water and oil or water and mercury which finds application in the preparation of photographic films. Uh, it acts like a cat catalytic agent and accelerate chemical reactions. Then in medicine, it is used to remove kidney stones, brain tumors without shedding any blood. It is used to remove broken teeth. It is also used in cavitation. Ultrasonic cavitation is a simple procedure that relies on the sound waves to flush fat from the body instead of intensive surgery. It is used for sterilizing milk and to kill bacteria. It is used to study the blood flow velocities in blood vessels of our body. It is used as a diagnostic tool to detect tumors, breast cancers and also the growth of the phytus can be studied using ultrasonic waves. These are the diagrams here high frequency sound waves reflect off the baby tissues in the bomb. Then here this uh, ultrasound we are making ultrasound to check the phytus to study the phytus. Okay. Uh, another application is a cheap ultrasonic range finder. Uh, how it works? Everybody knows that the speed of the sound in the dry air is 340 meter per second, right? So send a short ultrasonic pulse of 40 kilohertz in the air and try to listen to the echo. Of course, you won't hear anything. 
but with ultrasonic sensor uh, you can do this